Hello and welcome back to freephotoshop.com and this week's video tutorial looking at the move tool. Now on the face of it, the move tool appears to be a pretty simple tool to use, but I'm going to show you a few things that aren't immediately obvious when you use it generally inside Photoshop. So let me start by introducing the composition I have open on screen. It's what's going to be a poster for the freephotoshop.com website. We've got a title at the top here. We've got some text at the bottom which will be moving into position throughout this video. And then we've got four independent images that will be moving into the main composition and aligning to the text. So it's all good. I'm going to start by making sure I have the move tool active. And I can do that by coming up to the top of the toolbox and clicking the first icon. Now I can simply click and hold on some text down here in the image and then drag it around. And if that's not working for you, then you may want to come up to the options bar here and make sure that you have the auto select option enabled. Now, the way we've got things set up at the moment, whatever we click and drag will move, but we may not want that. For instance, we may not want the clouds layer to move should we not quite select a part of the text. So to stop that from happening, we'll hit Control or Command Z to reset the position of the clouds first and foremost. And then we'll come over to the layers palette, make sure the clouds layer is selected, and then click this little lock icon at the top here. Now we are unable to move the clouds layer no matter what we do. We can also move elements between images. So to create our poster, I need to move these four smaller icons into the main composition. And I'll do that by just dragging them into the composition and then releasing the mouse. That will create a duplicate of the original layer from the smaller image and place the moved contents onto a new layer in our main image. I'll do the same again with the second image, but this time when I drop, I'll hold down the shift key on the keyboard to drop the contents of the um, layer into the exact center of the main composition. And I'm going to do that two more times so we have a total of four icons added to the new layers inside this poster image that we have on screen and then I'll come here and close the four smaller images because they're no longer linked to the new layers we've copied over so we don't actually need them anymore. Alright now I'm going to position the four smaller images on the left hand side of the document just in a row and in no particular order and if you find that things jump about as you're moving them then you probably need to come up here to the view menu and choose the snap option which is one of those options that's either turned on or turned off. Now snapping is extremely useful for aligning, so you may want to leave it on, but for this video, I'm going to go ahead and switch it off. Now before we start to align these images using the move tool, I'm going to select one of them, say the sharpening layer here, and then I'm going to come up here to the options bar and activate this option, show transform controls, which if we look down here to the image once again, it's going to give us a transformation boundary around the layer we've got selected. And this is essentially the same as coming up here to the edit menu and selecting the free transform option because we now have the ability using the move tool to transform the layer. So if I drag a corner handle, I can change the size of the layer. If I want to constrain the proportions as I drag, I can hold down the shift key. If I move the cursor to just outside the transformation box, I can rotate the entire layer by clicking and dragging, and so on and so forth, really. All the tricks associated with the transformation controls apply here when using the Move tool. If you want to accept the changes, you can hit the Enter key on the keyboard, or if you want to cancel the changes like I do here, then you can use the Escape key. You can also move the transformation origin, which is this little handle in the middle here, to anywhere in your document, like I can place it over here, and now any changes I make will be relative to that point. So for instance, if I now decide to rotate the layer again, it will now rotate around the transformation origin. Okay, I'm going to cancel out and then I'm going to switch the show transform controls off because I tend to find it a little distracting when I'm not using them we don't really want them on the screen interfering with the position we're trying to put the uh, particular layer in for example okay now I'm going to move these four layers into a rough alignment so I can show you a few things and I'm going to actually 
on the back of that, come over here to the layers palette and I'm going to find the four layers in question and then I'm going to click the first one and then shift click the final one in order to move multiple layers or elements you need to have them selected first which is what we're doing here and now I'm going to come up here to the options bar where I have 12 different aligning and distributing options available these are the same options incidentally as you'll find if you come up here to the layer menu and then come down to the align and distribute submenus all we've got here in the options bar are shortcuts of those commands now if you hover the cursor above these options they'll tell you exactly what they do so the first six are the aligning options and for these to be active you need to have a minimum of two layers selected in the layers palette there is another way you can work and I'll show you that in just a moment but for now you need at least two layers selected the next six buttons are the distribute options and for these to be available you need a minimum of three layers active in the layers palette so let's take a look at how we can use them in our composition in order to align all of these selected layers into a neat and tidy column we need to use the horizontal aligning tools which are the second batch of free options available at the top here so I can either align to the left edges like so I can align to the center point of all four layers like so or I can align to the right edges in any event we get all four of our layers perfectly aligned and by the way I use the control or command Z trick there to undo those changes as I was showing them to you so we now have them all aligned where we want them but we don't yet have them properly distributed so in other words we have uneven gaps between the images as we look down our column and that just doesn't look very professional to me we can change that of course by using one of our six distribute options at the top here in the options bar and in this case we want to distribute the vertical centers so if I give that a click we now have perfectly even gaps between the image at the top here and the image at the bottom now because we have all four of the layers still selected in the layers palette we can go ahead and move them as a group so if I move just one of these layers all the other layers that I have selected will move exactly the same and placing them about there will look great okay now we're going to match up the text to align to the images but on the right hand side of the composition and before we get started we've already got a problem in that we have four images but only three pieces of text so we have our file formats text we have our elements text and we have our sharpening text what we need now is our levels text now instead of creating some more text from scratch and having to worry about the font the size the effects and so on we can just hold down the alt key here on the PC or the option key on the Macintosh and then just drag some of this text and release once we've got it into position what that's going to do is duplicate the layer so we can move over here to the layers palette and we now see that we have two layers that are exactly the same all we need to do now is to double click the highest layer because that's the one we just created and you've got to actually click on the layer thumbnail by the way to select the text and now we can just type the words levels because the fourth image over here is the advertising of the level series I've got available right here at freephotoshop.com just in case you wanted to know and once I've done that once I've got that text in place I can click this little tick icon up here in the options bar and we're done simple as that so now we've got everything we need we just have to align the text to the graphics and by the way there are other ways to work here inside Photoshop like using smart guides for instance but I'm gonna stick with the move tool here seeing as well primarily that's what this tutorial was about and here's how I'm gonna work I'm gonna come over here to the layers palette and I'm gonna control click the layer thumbnail to select it that's a command click on the Mac and now we have that layer selected over here in the composition now if you have a selection active in the image and you're using the move tool the align and distribute options at the top here will work in relation to the selected area so now to center the text against the selected area I'll simply choose to align the vertical center and there we have it now to move the text over to the right just a little bit here's what I'm gonna do this is another little trick that I want to share with you I'm gonna start dragging the text over to the right just a little bit and as I start moving the text 
I'm going to hold down the shift key on the keyboard which will confine the movement of the layer to the horizontal plane so we're not moving it around any more than we really want to. Once I've got it roughly where I want to uh, place the text over on the right hand side here I can simply release the mouse. Now let's take care of the lowest text in the composition. Instead of control or command clicking the thumbnail I'm going to come over here to the toolbox and select the rectangular marquee tool. Now I'll zoom in a touch to get maximum control of the image and then attempt to select the image like so. And that looks good to me. Now I'll zoom out and I'll once again make sure that the appropriate text is selected in the layers palette. Then to switch back to the move tool I'll hit the letter V on the keyboard. Try shift V if that doesn't work by the way. And finally I'll hit this second button along to align the vertical center of the text with the selected image and then use the keyboard shortcut Control or Command D to deselect everything in the composition. Once again, I'll use that Shift, Drag and Drag to move the text over. We'll worry about the specifics in a moment. For now, I'll drag the other two text layers into the same region because we've successfully positioned the first and last layers, which means we can now distribute the layers in between. So come over here to the Layers palette once you've got those other two layers positioned correctly and click on the first layer, shift click on the last one to select all four, then come up here to what is the seventh option and give it a click and that will evenly distribute all of our text layers based on the position of the first and last one. Now I want to align the text to the right hand side so I'll click the sixth button along is what it turns out this time and that's going to align the right edges of the text to each other. Or I could have just come up to the layers menu like I showed you before and chosen it from the actual menu. Finally I want to make sure that all eight of these elements are aligned perfectly on my page. So for instance we don't have more of a gap this side than we do the other side over here. And I can do that by using that old marquee tool trick we saw just a few moments ago. So here's what I'm going to do. I'll start by selecting all eight of these layers and remember we already have the four text layers selected so I can simply shift click on each individual image to add those to the selection then I can hit the letter M on the keyboard to access the marquee tool and this time I'm just going to enlarge the image window a touch just to give me a little more control, a little more room to work and then select an area that looks something like what I'm doing on screen here just something that we can use as a container just so we can center everything inside of the selected area. Okay, finally I'm going to switch back to the Move tool by pressing V on the keyboard and now if I attempt to center the layers to the selection we get a mess, quite basically is what turns out. And that's because Photoshop is working out the position of each layer individually. What we need is a way to convince Photoshop to see these eight layers as one solid unit and luckily we can do that by creating a layer group. So with the eight layers selected in the layers palette I'll come up here to the layers menu and I'll choose this option right here group layers and you'll see from the layers palette that those eight layers have now been added to a layer group called group one. Now we get a different behavior when we attempt to vertically and horizontally align the group to the selection outline. Things work out just the way we planned. I'm going to hit Control or Command D this time to remove the selection outline and there we have it. There's certainly a lot of different things you can do with the align and distribute commands as well as the move tool right here inside of Photoshop. Thanks for watching as always here at freephotoshop.com and I'll see you next time.